A little bit ago, I received a letter that informed me that this series was being used by a few teachers to teach their students the basics of PC hardware, and I cannot be more flattered. If you're watching this in your classroom right now, I want you to know you're all expelled. Seriously though, today we're going to continue talking about computer components, specifically RAM. Let's start off by figuring out what RAM is. RAM is an acronym for Random Access Memory, a type of computer memory that can be accessed randomly. That is, any byte of memory can be accessed without touching the preceding bytes. RAM is the most common type of memory found in computers, printers, and if you can believe it, sometimes in keyboards. Now, I can understand it if you hate the definition sometimes. They can get a bit too complicated. But if you go back to the human body analogy, RAM would be part of the cerebral system in the brain, the part that has control over muscles and movement. However, unlike a hard drive, which I will get into later, RAM is not a storage component, but more of a quick critical thinking part of the brain that moves on and processes information to other areas. Simply put, after information is sent to or from the processor, the RAM deciphers that information and dictates where to send it and what it will be doing upon arrival. Kind of like when you move your arm. In the brain, the cerebellum will send information to your arm, making it move. Now, RAM does indeed store some information as you use your computer. If you have a lot of tabs open in your browser, you're playing a video game, rendering a video, and other such things, it is the RAM working with multiple other components to allow you to do all those things at once. The more RAM you have, the faster the speed, the more you will hypothetically be able to do. I say hypothetically because RAM is not the ultimate power and it relies on other components like the processor and graphics card a lot. But let's delve a little further into RAM. When it comes to these memory sticks, you may have heard the term DDR and then a number. DDR stands for Double Data Rate. They named it Double Data because it transfers data from both the rising and falling edges of the clock signal. Really, that isn't super important, but I bring it up because with newer renditions of DDR, you get faster and more efficient RAM. DDR4 is the new standard today. You may know your RAM as that or as DDR3. As we get newer renditions of RAM, the older ones tend to disappear, but RAM is not like a graphics card in that you must have the right CPU and motherboard to use the correct rendition of DDR you have. For example, a stick of DDR4 memory will not fit into a motherboard that supports DDR3. Even if it did, the processor would not work with that RAM and your information that that RAM generally stores, deciphers, and allocates would have to be done through your hard drive, which would be much slower. See, not only is RAM faster than most SSDs today, but they're generally located very close to the CPU, so that information can be transmitted as quickly as possible. If you have no RAM or your RAM exceeds its memory limit, you will notice your computer will start to move very slowly because that information is being channeled through a much longer and slower route. So how much RAM should I get? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Firstly, always get an even number of sticks. The reason I say this is because if your motherboard supports dual channel, this means your motherboard will double the RAM's bandwidth. With one stick, you will not get that boost. There is a myth that having only one stick of RAM will hinder that stick by half its bandwidth, and to a degree, this is true, but only if you have that dual channel motherboard. And that one stick will still run as fast as it's supposed to, it just won't receive that bandwidth boost. If you're a heavy gamer, editor, and or renderer, I would recommend 16GB of RAM or higher. If you play video games casually, or not even at all, 8GB is more than sufficient, and just because you have 32GB of RAM, it doesn't mean it superclocks your PC. You just have more wiggle room when it comes to RAM-heavy processes. So I spoke of bandwidth. Let's cover that real quick. Bandwidth is the amount of data that can be sent to you. This is measured in seconds. 10 megabytes per second simply means that for every second, you can only receive 10 megabytes. The higher bandwidth, the better when it comes to downloading pretty much anything onto your computer. I know this seems random, but RAM is the component that handles bandwidth, so that dual channel boost I spoke of before can really be beneficial. Same if you want to be a server host. The more RAM you have, the more bandwidth you can push out, and the more stable your website or server will be. Now let's talk speed. All RAM is different, and just because a RAM stick says DDR4, it doesn't make it the fastest on the market. What determines the speed is actually something we learned about before when we talked about processors. This unit is called a megahertz. Fun tip, and I didn't mention this last time, never call it a megahertz like I did, or you will get screamed at by everyone on the internet. If you have forgotten what this unit is, a hertz is a unit of frequency, equal to one cycle per second. A gigahertz is equal to one billion cycles per second, and when it comes to RAM, one megahertz is equal to one million cycles per second. When you're buying RAM, you will see numbers like 2133 megahertz and 2400 megahertz. The higher the number, the faster the cycles per second, the faster the RAM. Now some questions you may run into are, is it okay to mix brands? The answer is yes, so long as they're matching DDR versions, you will be okay. What if my new RAM stick runs slower than my other RAM sticks? Will that work? 
Well, yes, but all the RAM will run at the lowest common denominator. So if your slowest stick is running at 2100 megahertz, so will all your other RAM sticks, even if they're supposed to be clocked at 2400 megahertz. You know, I never would have expected RAM to be so complicated. It's a component that seems so small and seemingly unimportant, but sometimes you'll find that's how technology works. I know computers can seem daunting and tricky, and you may think that you could never get involved with it, but to be honest, all it takes is a bit of research, some preparation, a screwdriver, and a good memory never hurts.